Hi, today's podcast is about the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Differentiating between organisms as prokaryotic or eukaryotic is simply based on the structures that they have within their cells. Primarily, whether or not they have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. The simplest way to see it, prokaryotes do not have these structures, whereas eukaryotes do. Now, the organisms that have these different kinds of cells are prokaryotic organisms are found in the domains archaea and bacteria, and all organisms that have eukaryotic cells are found in the domain eukarya. I wonder where they got their name from. Let's first look at prokaryotes. Prokaryotic cell structures include a sturdy cell wall, and on the outside of that cell wall are little structures called pili. Some, but not all, prokaryotes have these. There are also flagella, sometimes, on the outside that move back and forth like this. Sometimes, but not always. Just within that cell wall is a cell membrane, and within the cytoplasm of the cell, you're going to find one singular, large, circular chromosomal DNA, so one big circle of DNA, and then you may also find some smaller loops of DNA, these are called plasmid DNA. Again, all living things, all cells have ribosomes in them, and there's some little food storage area within prokaryotic cells as well. Now let's look at what each of these cell parts does. Again, remembering that our prokaryotic organisms are found in the domains archaea and bacteria. So the cell wall is a structure whose job is to actually keep the structure of the organism as well as protect it from outside forces. Sticking out, remember from the outside of the cell wall, are pili. The organisms that do have pili, they use them for attachment, so it's sort of like Velcro, it helps them stick onto cells and or other surfaces and also for conjugation which is what enables two prokaryotes to come together and exchange some of that plasmid DNA. Flagella that are found on some of these prokaryotic cells are used for movement like little tails. Your cell membrane regulates what comes in and out of that prokaryotic cell. Food storage, obviously the point of that is to have an energy source. Again, all prokaryotes have one singular, circular piece of chromosomal DNA, and it's going to code for all of the essential cellular functions. So without this, we're dead. By we, I mean bacteria and archaea. Whereas plasmid DNA are smaller loops of DNA that code for non-essential cell functions, like antibacterial resistance. What's great about plasmids, and we're going to learn more about this later, is they play a crucial role in genetic engineering. Humans have figured out how to manipulate plasmids for our benefit. And finally, uh, all prokaryotic cells, as well as eukaryotic cells, have ribosomes whose job it is to help synthesize proteins. All right, now let's compare that to eukaryotic cell structure. Eukaryotic cells are much larger and much more complex. So they also, many but not all, pro eukaryotic cells, I'm sorry, have a cell wall, all have a cell membrane. Some of the new structures that eukaryotic cells have that prokaryotes don't are a nucleus, rough endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, we've seen those in prokaryotes, so we have a little commonality there, Golgi apparatus, that's fun to say, um, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, lysosomes, chloroplasts, some but not all eukaryotes have these. All right, uh, everybody's got mitochondria and vacuoles. Vacuole size can vary, depend on the kingdom. So let's look again at what each of these structures does.
organisms in the domain Eukarya can be found in the kingdoms Animalia, Plantae, Fungi, and Protista. So these are kind of things that go on you and me and plants and mushrooms and algae, things like that. So don't forget what makes eukaryotes special is that they have a nucleus and membrane bound organelles. So those are the ones we're going to focus on, not really the ones that we share with prokaryotes. So the nucleus makes eukaryotic cells unique. And this is the place where DNA is stored. Now the DNA in a nucleus is different in eukaryotic cells because there are many linear chromosomes as opposed to one single circular chromosome in a prokaryote. For protein synthesis, eukaryotic cells use ribosomes, rough endoplasmic reticulum, and Golgi apparatus. So all those work together to synthesize proteins. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum's job is to synthesize lipids. Now the difference between smooth ER and rough ER isn't only its function, but we call rough ER rough because it's studded with ribosomes, right? whereas smooth ER does not have any ribosomes. Next are lysosomes. Some, but not all organisms have these, um, but their job is to store enzymes. Lys, L-Y-S, is a root word meaning to break apart, and that's one of the main jobs of enzymes, is to break things apart. Next, some but not all organisms have chloroplasts, and the job of the chloroplasts is to do the process of photosynthesis, where we take sun energy, light energy, and use it to make glucose, C6H12O6. It's a form of chemical energy. But we can't use that, so thank goodness we have an organelle called the mitochondria, whose job is to do a process called cellular respiration. In this process, we take that glucose, C6H12O6, and turn it through chemical reactions into a product called ATP, which is energy that we can use. Finally, one of the major structures that you can find in eukaryotic cells that you won't find in prokaryotic cells are vacuoles. And these are just sort of bubbles uh, of, you know, membrane full of water and food, all sorts of different things. If you're a plant, you have a giant vacuole in the middle. Everybody else has smaller ones. There's one final difference major difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms, and that's the way they reproduce. Prokaryotes reproduce or make more of themselves through a process called binary fission. This is an asexual process, meaning you don't have to combine new DNA to make your offspring. So in this, you have your original prokaryote with its circular chromosome, and it's going to replicate that DNA and then it's just going to split in two. So now we have, we've replicated our DNA, and now we have two genetically identical offspring. So they're exactly identical to the parent and to each other. On the other hand, eukaryotes reproduce sexually most of the time. And what this means is you have two parental haploid gametes, which means two cells, two sex cells, uh, that only have half as many chromosomes as every other cell from parents. So you've got two different parents, you've got cells with half as much DNA as each other, and they're actually going to fuse together and form one new genetically identical, I'm sorry, genetically unique um, individual that's a combination of the genes of each of the two different parents.